No? Lotto's not your gang? All right, give me the uh, give me the Derby winner. Give me a horse bet. Sea biscuit. Nah, he's not running this year. You better stick to landscaping. <laughs> Today, I'll show you a grain that's good for the garden, a meal, or a snack. And I've got some bright ideas about how to make sure your plants are getting enough light. Plus, you'll be over the moon for this monochromatic masterpiece. I just love rice. It's the perfect complement to just about any meal. And to better appreciate and understand how the happy little grain grows, I've plowed my way over to see Jessica Lundberg at the Lundberg Family Farms in Richvale, California. Jessica, there's so much about what you do that I love so much, and this is maybe one of my favorite things is the cover cropping that you do. Mm -hmm. It's so important. It's very I mean, important. I do it just in a backyard vegetable garden. Mm -hmm. Here you're doing it on a vast scale, thousands of acres. Oh, exactly. But just as important on either scale. Absolutely. Cover cropping with beneficial plants is a great chemical-free way to condition and fertilize soil and to keep neighboring plants happy and healthy. It's also a good way to displace pesky weeds and prevent erosion. You've got one of the the legume crops that you right. grow here. This exactly. is a vetch? The purple vetch is the legume that's going to be fixing the nitrogen for us, and that's really the important part of this, uh, this cover crop. This is what will get chopped and disked and put back into the soil and provide some nitrogen, some organic matter for the rice crop. The Lundberg Farm's eco-friendly agriculture dates back to Jessica's grandparents, who started the farm in the 1930s. Many of their practices, like this cover cropping, can easily be scaled down and used in the home garden. I use a lot of clover at home myself. That's another one that Clover's I really... Clover's great, but with the heavy clay soils we found, the purple vetch will tolerate it a little bit more. Like most crops, rice is planted during the spring. Just like in an organic garden, Jessica's farm will tolerate some amount of insects, but minimal organic pesticides are used only if the crop is seriously threatened. After the harvest in the fall, most farms will burn the leftover stocks. However, at Jessica's, they're chopped up and plowed into the soil as nutrients, thus leaving no waste or air pollutants. And then the other amazing thing is that you, you rescue the ducks. Yeah, that, that's the fun part of it. It's, uh, that's something that just came along serendipitously that we, uh, as farming cover crops, you're naturally creating some habitat out here. So we're able to work with volunteers and they'll come out before we need to chop a crop and they'll go through the whole field and collect the eggs and send the eggs to a hatchery pretty close by. And they'll uh, raise the ducks up to about five weeks old, band them and release them. And we've probably released about 20,000 ducks over the last 15 years back into the wild. That's such a great story. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. <laughs> but enough about ducks. I think it's time to fill up the delivery trucks and head over to processing. How much did that truck just dump in here? That truck was probably about 25,000 pounds. Wow. Mm -hmm. Inside the mill, the grain is husked, sorted, and electronically examined for defects. The hulls, however, don't go to waste. That's a byproduct, but it goes to the next step. Most of it's going for animal bedding, which is kind of neat because some of it goes to chicken farms, and then we go chicken farms and get the chicken manure and we put it back on the organic field. Oh, I thought it was a hairnet. It is in fact a bouffant cap. Now that we're all styling, we meet up with mill manager Jeff Chandler to show us a little more of the noisy yet busy facility. The rice that we saw being milled will come into a finished product tank and it'll come through the pack line. Do you want to tell us about the pack line, Jeff? What we're doing on this line right now is organic brown bog running. In fact, we've got about 50 bags a minute on this line. On the other line over there, we're running Eagle Farm Wildland. That's a one pound pack. It runs at about the same speed. And with both lines working simultaneously, they can crank out 2,000 cases of rice each shift. But we're not quite finished here. There's more cool machinery and more food to check out. The Lundberg Farm makes other tasty products like risotto. And the flavor of the day is butternut squash, rice chips, and rice cakes. My wife and daughter eat rice cakes every single day. That's good. Steve Clements, another mill manager, has given me the go-ahead for a little sampling before they get packaged. Let's see, I want this one. Right out of the oven. Right out of the oven. Mm. 
running around 60 to 70 machines together, they put out a whopping 15,000 rice cakes per hour. You think that's amazing? Well, pop quiz, hotshot. If you just can't get enough of rice, what do you do? Believe it or not, growing rice is something anyone can do in their very own yard. Many gorgeous ornamental varieties are available to grow in ponds. But be sure to check the tag or ask a garden center representative to see if what you picked is invasive. If it is, plant it only in a lined pond. If your pond's not lined, mesh containers will do the trick. These containers allow fresh water in and out, but will keep the roots at bay. Soilless pond media will keep it potted. It won't color, cloud, float away, or change the pH of the water. And voila, this Zazania latifolia isn't going anywhere. Growing rice from seed isn't as hard as you may think either, especially in a bucket. You can find seeds at a local nursery or on the internet. First, soak the seeds for about 36 hours and let them dry another 24. Fill a bucket with six inches of soil and compost. Next, add water to cover the soil five inches. Finally, evenly spread in the seeds and place the bucket in a warm, sunny area. Oh, and be sure to periodically add more water to maintain its depth. Depending on the type of rice or your climate, it can take up to 160 days before you can harvest any grain. But don't expect to harvest big enough for a good meal. If you want rice by the pound, that's better left to the pros like Jessica. She's continuing her grandparents' legacy quite nicely with all the delicious products and the exemplary, earth-friendly farming. And that reminds me, before I go home tonight, I need to pick up a little something for dinner. Some plants like soft candlelight, others like the blazing sun. Next, some tips to help you figure out which intensity is right for you. Plus, how to add drama to your backyard by using just a few colors. HGTV wants you to dream big. Dream big. <laughs> HGTV is making dreams come true. Start at home. I ask you to be as impartial as you can be and I thank you for your service. Court adjourned. Ah, the dash of desperation. Counselor, you need counsel. I know, I gotta go all the time and I'm at the mercy of the court. You could have an accident with lots of witnesses. Maybe you should have the Detrol discussion with your doctor. Detrol? Detrol LA, the brand doctors prescribe most to help calm those frequent sudden urges. That gotta go feeling. Just one pill works all day and all night. At DetrolLA.com, you'll learn how to get the discussion started. If you've certain stomach problems, glaucoma, or trouble getting urine to pass, you shouldn't take Detrol LA. The most common side effects are dry mouth, headache, constipation, and abdominal pain. Having the Detrol discussion with your doctor can make a difference. I rest my case. Finally, a car that revolves around you. Because you're more than one thing. So is Venza. Getting from Stevens Green in Dublin to the Guinness Storehouse should take 15 minutes. That's the way we do it, the Viking Plumber. I still have the mark on the end of my nose. Footprints from the fairy's toes. I think they're speckled, but some say they're freckled. There was a fairy on my nose. But don't be surprised if you get sidetracked. Millions enter to win the biggest prize in TV. Only one dream will come true. Who will win? HGTV Dream Home Giveaway, Sunday, March 15th at 8, 7 central. Heavy rains and thunderstorms have forced me indoors today. So I put together a little Q&A segment that focuses on indoor gardening issues. I mean, hey, what else could I do? 
How do you determine whether a plant is receiving low, medium, or bright light? That's a great question, although it's not as easy to answer as you might think. But generally speaking, the light coming through the windows is brightest on the south side of the house, followed by the east, then the west, and finally the north, where light levels are typically lowest. However, roof overhangs and structures, such as covered patios, can reduce the amount of light coming through the windows. And as the seasons change, so does the light level. In winter, for instance, light levels are lower than they are in summer due to the lower angle and reduced intensity of the sun. But to answer your question specifically, the only way to determine with any real degree of accuracy just how much light your plants are receiving is with one of these, a light meter. These inexpensive gizmos will give you a pretty good idea of the light intensity in a given area of a room. Cheap meters, say those that sell for under 20 bucks, will give you general readings such as low, medium, or bright. More expensive meters may actually measure the intensity of light in foot candles, but you really don't need that degree of accuracy. Oh, and by the way, I want you to meet Marley. This is my boy's dog. They're both on spring break, so he's spending the week with me. Half the rooms in my house get too much light, while the other half get too little. What can I do? Well, if your plants are receiving too much light, try moving them. As plants are moved away from the window, the light intensity drops off dramatically. In the center of a room, for example, the light intensity is only 50%. Whereas if you move a plant all the way to the north corner of even a south-facing window, the light will be only 5% of what it is next to the window. If you can't move the plants, then consider installing adjustable shutters or curtains to cut the light levels. Even sheer curtains will reduce the light intensity more than you might think. As for the room that gets too little light, consider these options. First, try painting the walls white, because white colored walls will provide as much as 30% more light than dark colored walls. Also, consider hanging a large mirror, which can flood a room with far more light than it would receive otherwise. And if neither of those suggestions works in your situation, then you might want to consider growing your plants under lights. More on that in a moment. What are the symptoms of plants that receive too much or too little light? Plants react to too much light by curling their leaves downward and losing their green color. Now, unfortunately, a lot of gardeners interpret those signs for a lack of food and moisture, so they water and fertilize their plants, when in fact, that may be the last things those plants need. Too little light results in plants that are leggy or spindly with fewer leaves than usual. But in both cases, the solution is to simply move the plant to an area that gets more or less light depending on the situation. And in most cases, the plant will respond within a week or two. And thankfully, most house plants, including nearly all tropicals, grow reasonably well under medium light. What tips do you have for gardening under fluorescent lights? The most important tip I can give you and the biggest mistake by far that people make when growing under lights has to do with how close the plants are to the lights themselves. Too often people set the lights way too far away from the plants, which results in leggy growth. Ideally, most plants should be no more than four to six inches away from the lights. That's especially true of young seedlings. Also, realize that fluorescent lights tend to give off more light in the center section of the tube and less light toward the ends. So plants that need more light like these chives and those tomatoes should be placed in the center section of the tube. Fluorescent lights also dim over time and therefore give off less light. It's best to replace them when dark rings begin to appear at the tube ends. The discoloration indicates that the electrodes are beginning to deteriorate. Dust that accumulates on the tubes will also cut the intensity of the light. So every now and then you should clean the tubes with a damp cloth. Does it matter whether the source of the light comes from the sun or artificial lights? Well, believe it or not, no. Plants don't seem to care whether the light they receive comes from natural or artificial sources. In fact, African violets actually grow better under fluorescent lights, perhaps because the light they receive on the jungle floor is closer in character to that emitted by fluorescence. Do you have to use those expensive fluorescent lights or are the regular ones okay? Well, the expensive ones definitely work better because they emit more light in the spectrums that plants prefer, namely the red and blue wavelengths. But having tried them before in the past, I'm just not convinced that they're worth the extra money, which is why I tend to stick with the regular 40-watt fluorescent tubes that you can buy just about anywhere. Does watering a houseplant more increase the humidity surrounding the plant? 
No. In fact, watering a house plant to increase the humidity is a surefire way to kill it, especially during the winter months when the humidity in most homes is extremely low. During that time, many house plants do indeed suffer from a lack of humidity, which is water vapor in the air. Symptoms include brown edges on the leaves, leaves curling downward, and an overall lack of vigor. But if you add water to the soil, you won't actually increase the humidity. What you will do is cause the roots to rot from excess moisture. The solution then is to mist the plants regularly, once a day if possible. Alternatively, you can place plants on pebble-filled trays to which you add water. You can group plants together because as plants lose moisture, they raise the humidity in the area. And you can place plants near a container filled with water. This indoor water feature works well for me. Of course, you can also run a small humidifier like this one or have a more elaborate system installed on your furnace. Hey, Paul, why didn't you go on spring break? Well, that's a good question, too. My wife Carrie, my son Spencer, and my daughter Hannah are in Breckenridge skiing and snowboarding, and Dalton's somewhere on the coast of Alabama having a great time, I'm sure. But one of us had to stay here and pay for all their pleasures. But that's cool, because I get to hang out with Marley, <laughs> and I let him get up on the couch. Nobody else lets him do that. <laughs> Coming up, we'll get bright with white in this monochromatic moon garden. And my picks to keep your trunks in tip-top shape. I'm Genevieve Gorder, and I know what you're thinking. I wish HGTV would come to my house and take on my problems on a show. Well, I'm here to say it can happen. Go to HGTV.com backslash Dear Genevieve and tell me what's driving you crazy about your home. I may just knock on your door and take on the challenge myself. Because it's time to fall in love with your home again, and I can help you make that happen. Home is best. It's where life happens. Dear Genevieve, tomorrow night at 8.30, 7.30 Central on HGTV. True or false? Your pet is safe from fleas, ticks, and heartworms in winter. Sorry, it's false. And these guys can mean big trouble. Your pets need year-round protection, plus medications for cold weather joint pain. Fortunately, they cost a lot less at 1-800-PET-MEDS. And they're delivered free, right to your door with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. For fast service, free shipping, and big savings, call now or order online from 1-800-PET-MEDS, America's largest pet pharmacy. Comcastic Labs high-speed internet field test. Introduction of power boost. We never stop making fast, faster Comcast high-speed internet with power boost. Now with blazing speeds up to 20 megabits per second. The original Bud Classic that started it all. Check out Dad's first starring role. Air Bud Special Edition. He looks so young. Now I know where I got my moves from. With an all-new Buddy's commentary. He's talking about us. Air Bud Special Edition on Disney DVD March 3rd, rated PG. Introducing the only three-layered bath tissue with plush quilts. New Quilted Northern Ultra Plush. It's so luxurious, it may inspire you to ultra plush all the things you come in touch with. New Quilted Northern Ultra Plush. Luxury you can see and feel. Oh, guess who it is? It's your butt. Hey, butt. Oh, okay, I'll tell him. Your butt says to get rid of that phone you're sitting on and get one of these. It's a Blackberry that flips closed. So no more butt dialing. Yay. Yay. Oh, really? My butt just hung up on you. Sorry. The new Blackberry Pearl Flip. The first Blackberry designed for the rest of us. Only from T-Mobile. When did you get smart about your digestive health? When I found something delicious for my digestion. When my stomach couldn't wait 14 days for slow-acting yogurt. When I chose a safe, more natural solution for my family, instead of pills and powders. Plum Smart is clinically proven to help regulate your digestion with a unique blend of prebiotic fiber, magnesium, and potassium. I feel better already. Get the clinically proven solution for digestive health. Plum Smart and Plum Smart Light from Sunsweet. The art of gardening is rarely, if ever, a black or white issue. So why on earth would you want a garden that's black or white? Gardens are typically bursting with color. But get this, you can actually pack a whole lot of exuberance into a garden based on just one color. 
I love designing monochromatic gardens. They're dramatic, they're interesting, and hey, even though it's the same color, they don't have to be boring because you can get variation in the foliage, you can get variation in the stems, you can even get variation in the flowers. Take red, for example. The related colors can skew from pale purples to saturated yellows and just about everything in between. Suddenly, the red we might have envisioned many moons ago goes way beyond expectations. Of course, the area surrounding a garden does a lot to bring color. This yard? Well, it needs some work to salvage even some color other than its present unnamed shade of ick. I've got just the guy to do it. Multi-hued landscape designer Michael Glassman. The before on this yard was pretty dismal. Let me tell you something, the fence, it was falling down and was all different colors. It looked like an old barn, so we painted it. Already it has more life to it. And what I'm sitting on now, this new patio, used to be a bunch of weeds, and now we put this new patio in. But now the real fun begins. One of Michael's challenges in this yard will be infusing some brightness into a very shady area. The white plants and variegated foliage will certainly help, but one thing's for sure, the shades, shapes, sizes, and textures will be anything but white bread. Some people call a white garden a moon garden. What I like about it is, at night or in a shady area, the white really comes to life. Now, what I've got here is a white iberus or a candy tuff, and I'm going to infuse it with a little gray. This is Power Castle Artemisia, and you can see the two together, really a dramatic effect. For some quick dimension and architecture, Michael and his crew are building raised planting beds out of these dark gray paving blocks. They're using a method called dry stacking. No concrete is required because the pavers stack easily and securely on top of each other. Don't build too high, though. There's a bit of physics involved when too much soil and water press against the blocks. Plus, community rules and municipal regulations may require a permit if you build much over three feet. That is so cool. I love raised planters, and now let me tell you why. Well, first of all, it's a great way to add new soil. And the raised planter, it makes it much easier for planting. The other thing that's great about it is it showcases your plant. And the most important thing, it's a great way to improve your drainage. Before planting the bed, Michael scores the native soil. This will give the roots of the new plants a kickstart, penetrating what was formerly a scraggly, compacted, well, lawn, for lack of a better word. The planting medium is made up of topsoil and rich compost to boost growth. You'll notice he leaves several inches at the top of the bed to allow for the volume of the new plants and to give water sufficient area to drain through the structure without overflowing. Quick design tip, when you have two beds that are close together, make them mirror images of each other for a nice, harmonious look. We had a really unique situation in this yard. In the back of the yard is deep shade, but in the foreground, you can see it gets more sun. So we're trying to do a monochromatic garden, so we had to think of plants that would take the shade as well as the sun. Billy Idol fans might agree with this observation. It's a nice day for a white planting bed. We have a problem here. The deck behind me, I hate it. It's an ugly, bombed out mess. And I don't know what to do with it, and I don't have the time. You'll also notice that the fence isn't painted. So I've got a great solution. I'm going to take these iron screens, I'm going to set them in the ground and plant an evergreen vine, and voila, deck is gone. No one's going to have to see it. If you can't clean it, screen it. Screens are a great solution for unsightly areas, and they come in all kinds of materials. Iron, wire, wood, bamboo, you name it. Cool, perfect. Play around with the placement of the screens, hammer them in, add a vine of some sort, and it's bye-bye eyesore. I'm going to put another iron trellis in front of the air conditioner and put a potato vine so they're kind of, they kind of create an archway. Here's a little more eye candy to put this garden over the moon, a fountain. This is a cool fountain. It's cast iron, and what I like is they've already treated it, so it's got this patina. So again, kind of the green-gray. Um, the blue-gray will look so great with all the stone. And again, it fits really nicely with the white garden. As if the monochromatic plants weren't tranquil enough, fountains add an unsurpassed element of distinction and elegance. Gotta admit, it's a nice touch. We have water! Notice the pale blue of the fountain? That's close to the gray pavers. That's close to the silver artemisia. That's close to the variegated gardenias. That's close to the white azaleas. That's close to the... Well, you get the point. White is the starting point. 
you paint in the rest from there. One thing you've probably noticed is the non-white Japanese maple. Adding a plant of a contrasting color adds a spark to the surroundings that sets off the dominant color that much more. Who says a monochromatic garden needs to be boring? Take a look at it, it's unbelievable. Now add a bistro table and two chairs, an Adirondack chair, some garden ornamentation, and it's incredible. I've always said design is in the details. Enjoy. Next, ways to guard your trees from Wiley Weed Whackers. Buying your first home, a big dream for most people. Follow some first time home buyers as they make their dream a reality. It's an entire week of all new episodes. House Hunters First Time Home Buyers Week starts tomorrow night at 9 on HGTV. Dream big, start at home. Key West 6 to get down. because you only have one life to live. Your mother understands. So do your friends and sisters. Hot flashes, night sweats, and mood swings can be an uncomfortable part of life. Fortunately, you can find relief with Remy Femin. Remy Femin is the all-natural, clinically proven, and OBGYN recommended alternative for relief from menopausal symptoms without the risks of hormone supplements or prescription medications. Get back to the life you love naturally with Remy Femin. Go to RemyFemin.com or find Remy Femin at retail stores near you. society, which is why no one should be stuck at home or work to access the internet at 3G speed. The wireless revolution continues with Sprint Simply Everything Plus mobile broadband. You get wireless 3G for your laptop and unlimited email, web, and talk for your phone. Cut the cord and save $599 a year on America's most dependable 3G network. Come to a Sprint store and see how you can live wirelessly. Whether you're shopping for your first place, oh, this is awesome, or looking for something that has real potential, wow, the search can be overwhelming. HGTV's Open House Sunday lineup has what you need to know now. That is awesome. Real advice. Anyone should be able to do it. Real information. I just want to make a lot of little changes. Real answers to your questions about real estate. Not bad, right? Open House Sunday today, beginning at 10:30 on HGTV. Trees get damaged by all kinds of things, the most obvious of which include weather in the form of ice, snow, and high winds, as well as pests and diseases. But believe it or not, one of the most common causes of tree damage comes in the form of this baby, a weed whacker or a string trimmer. And the damage these mechanical devices can cause, as seen here at the base of this young ginkgo, can be considerable. When a tree's trunk is damaged by a string trimmer, the open wound becomes an invasion site for pests and diseases. And if the wound wraps all the way around the trunk, it may cut off the tree's vascular system, which means it can't take up water and nutrients, and in no time at all may die. So what's the solution? Well, the most obvious solution is to simply be careful and try and keep the string trimmer away from the trunk of the tree. But that's not as easy as it sounds especially with some of the newer string trimmers that automatically advance the line as the line gets shorter. One of the surest ways to avoid damage is to plant the tree in a mulched bed so that the need for trimming close to the trunk is eliminated. But when all else fails, you can use one of several different types of tree guards, all of which work in essentially the same way. By wrapping one of these babies around the trunk of the tree, whether a short one or a tall one, you protect the trunk from string trimmer damage. And thankfully, these babies are cheap, and spending just a few bucks to save a tree that could be potentially priceless is money well spent indeed. If you'd like to learn more about tree guards or anything else you've seen on today's show, just click on hgtv.com slash gardening by the yard. 